Number 68. How does the bond energy of HCl gas differ from the standard enthalpy of formation of HCl gas? Okay, so in this case, we're only going to talk about the differences, right? Because they just want to know how do these differ. Now, we've seen on the channel, right? Or maybe, you know, in your class, you've already discussed the, your heat chapter, right? Enthalpy is delta H. I remember this because when you're doing enthalpy or entropy, the one that has the H is the delta H. This is your heat energy. Now, if we had to write a standard enthalpy of formation equation for HCl, remember you are forming HCl, so that means that HCl should be on the product side. So we have uh, HCl, and that's a gas, and you're forming it so it's going to be on the product side, and you always form from your most stable elements. So you have to think of your diatomics. So I definitely have hydrogen coming together with chlorine. And I say to myself, okay, this is the delta H, right? So delta H of formation, this little notch up here means that it's got to be standard. And the F just means that, you know, formation. So if we're writing a delta H formation, it has to be in this form, but we're not done because we need to say, okay, is hydrogen in its most stable form? No, nah. hydrogen is one of your diatomics. So hydrogen, when it's alone, has to be paired with a buddy, right? So hydrogen doesn't want to be alone. It's got to be a buddy with himself. And the same thing with chlorine. Chlorine doesn't want to be by itself as well. And now just know that hydrogen and chlorine, they're both gases standard state. But the thing here is that you have to balance. Now keep in mind that when you're doing actual standard enthalpy of formation, you are only allowed to have one mole of the product. So whenever you're dealing with your standard energy of formation, you're only allowed to have one mole of this. So that means that you just have to change your uh, coefficients of the reactants. You only want one H, but since hydrogen doesn't want to be alone, it has to be a buddy, H2, it's a diatomic. So I could put a coefficient in front of here to make this into a one, right? You say two times what will get me to one? Well, just to show you, you know, two times something equals one, right? Divide by two. Divide by 2, x equals 1 half. So we can use fractions for your delta h's. Everywhere else, if it's like a balanced general equation, no fractions. And the same thing for the chlorine. You want one of them, you have two. So I need 1 half. And that would be the general formula for HCl. Uh, and your, you know, enthalpy of formation. Now just know that when you're dealing with delta H uh, standard for your formation, these are going to be exothermic, generally. So your answer is going to be a negative value. But now when we talk about bond energies, Bond energy is the amount of energy it takes to break the compound into its elements. So on the flip side, instead of HCl being formed, you want to break HCl. So HCl is actually going to be on the reactant side and you're going to break it into no more bonds. And we say to ourselves, okay, so we had H2, right? Because that's the most stable form. But is there a bond in H2? Yes, there is. It's a single bond if we drew out the Lewis structure. So with bond energies, you never go to your most stable, you know, uh, elemental form. You just strip it away and you say, hey, I just have one H. And
and I just have one CL because on your product side, you should not have any more bonds. Now, for your bond energy, it's always going to be back to gases. Gases, gases, gases all around. And now just make sure, okay, in this case, is this equation balanced? For sure it is because 1H, we'll say 1H, Cl, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, so that's all good. One Cl, one Cl, so it's all balanced. And the thing here is that maybe I'll say bond energy, Be. If we've noticed the HCl is on the left side and your delta H value, the HCl was on the product side, so because of this little swap, it basically is going to be a positive value. It's going to be endothermic. Now, generally speaking, if you only have one bond, sometimes your delta H will equal the bond energy, but that's not always the case. But in this, this uh, question just wanted us to, you know, explain the differences. And this is basically the, the answer in a nutshell. Your enthalpy formation will be the exothermic answer. And the bond energy is always going to be the endothermic number. It's always going to be a positive because you're breaking this bond. You're breaking HCl versus forming HCl. And that's it. So I hope this answers the question. Um, it definitely answers the question. Let me know in the comments if this helps you out. Um, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And I hope you're having a great day. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.